Okay, so hi, hi everyone. It is a true pleasure to welcome you, Karen, here today to kickstart this new series of interviews that I will be doing with um, coaches on the topic of how to find a coach. So awesome. thank you so much for saying yes to my invitation. And thank you, Dorothy. Connecting um, and kickstarting these interviews. And before we start uh, exploring this mysterious subject, I'd love you to share, Karen, who you are, what you do, where is your work now, what is really exciting for you, and also please share a little bit about the book as well. I know that there are a lot of people out there who already know you, but there might be people who don't know you yet. I really would love people to meet you and really understand who you are and about your work Thank as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. I have been coaching since 2007. In 2007, I hired my first coach that I worked with. And I worked with her until 2011. And I had a, another coach. So I've always had a coach in my world uh, the entire time. Maybe I've been without a coach for about a week or a month in time, but always had a coach. And uh, I focus on working with executives, entrepreneurs, and other business coaches. And I absolutely love this profession. I love everything about it from the time I wake up in the morning until the end of my day. And I'm very committed to creating impact with my clients. And that's part of the reason that Alex and I, my partner, wrote this book on how to get the most out of coaching. And that's how we met, Dorothy, right? Yes. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I absolutely love your topic on how to hire a coach because it feels like that's really the step that occurs before how you get the most out of coaching. Mm -hmm. And I've searched, there's nothing out there on Amazon. And so I think you're really on to something mm -hmm. because it's one thing to be part of a coaching community and to know different experiences of your colleagues and, and very important for a coach to always have a coach so that they can really help build their business, see their blind spots, help them with their clients help them create in the world. And so I think it's easier for a coach to be able to hire a coach based upon their colleagues' experiences. But for someone like an executive or someone who's looking for a relationship coach or someone who is out there looking for a life coach, I don't, I think the task is a little more daunting for them. And so I, I think it's, this book is so needed in the world and um, I'm really excited to be a part of helping you uh, create this. And so happy to share my years of wisdom in working with coaches and share some stories. Um, I was really curious this past week, I, I was thinking about this interview and I was thinking, how much have I really spent and invested in coaching? And I put together a little spreadsheet and I started going through from 2007 all the way through wow. here, all the way into next year, actually, because I already hired my coach for next year. And I've spent close to a quarter million, uh, sorry, three quarters, three quarters. That's three quarters of a million. We're not quite at a million yet, but we're at three quarters <laughs> yeah. of a million. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. I probably missed some things, uh, because I've done a lot, not that's not just working with a coach, but all the extracurricular investment. So in terms of being certified for uh, assessments, in terms of coach training school, going to different seminars, being in the room with uh, Warner Earhart, being in the room with Byron Katie, uh, George and Linda Pransky. So there's been a lot of other investments as well along the way. 
and, um, and working with Steve Hardison last year and my commitment to flying back and forth between Colorado and uh, Arizona. And I know that there's other coaches that fly. I know your coach, Ankush Jane, flies from the UK to Arizona. And so um, huge commitment, not just in terms of the money spent in working with coaches, but also your time. And so finding the right coach is, is so important. Yeah. And there's, there's many things that I look at in terms of, you know, who's, who is the right coach for me? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you'd like me to share, I can wow. share some of the things that I look at. hundred yeah. percent. I'd love okay. you to share, uh, Karen, because you've already touched on so many um, important things. So um, exactly your book, <laughs> this is how we've met. And yeah, your book, a- it has been an inspiration to me and also an inspiration to roll out those interviews because your book is, is the book that is literally sitting on my desk always. And I literally felt there needs to be another book like a, a, a sequel pr- a precursor yeah, yeah. Precursor a precursor. yeah. yes uh-huh. so you've literally inspired me to 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 think about those interviews and also additionally additionally a lot of people who I'm hearing are asking these questions because as you've also mentioned coaching is entering the mainstream of our lives it's you know it's not only for athletes it's not only for performers it's also not only for you know the top business leaders but actually it's for each and every one of us Uh, it's coaching entered our workplaces our our personal lives we all want to live good happy healthy fulfilling successful lives and of course, coaching can really help us to do that. And I That's loved right. hearing, Karen, that your journey through coaching is like, I've had a coach since, you know, for a long time. So I love that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm a, yeah, I'm a firm believer. I'm mm-hmm. a firm believer that if we don't design our life, no one else is going to. And so it's really about us being proactive and Mm -hmm. going after taking action and getting what it is that we want in life. And to have someone who has the unrelenting belief in you that you can do this is absolutely profound, that they have your back and they are there, they are your thinking partner. Uh, they are your, the person you can go to, to con- they're your confidant, you can confide in them. And there's no judgment that they believe that you can do whatever you've set your mind out to do. And there's just, it, it's very different than even having a mentor. Uh, in your life, because it's, this is a very much a professional experience and that they're not there for you uh, necessarily socially. They're there in a very professional manner and they're there to help support and uplift you uh, Mm -hmm. and help you design the life that you have, have dreamt of. And they're there to help you overcome challenges. And so I think one of the first things that I look at, Dorothy, is what is the chemistry and connection that I have with my coach? And um, my coach that I'm working with right now, I've worked with for many, many years, Steve Chandler. And uh, Steve is very savvy when it comes to business. And so he helps fill that niche that I work in. And he really gets when I work with corporate executives and he really gets when I work with entrepreneurs or business coaches. Mm -hmm. And so that's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, He's extraordinarily funny. And (laughs) I just, I love that. And he simplifies everything. 
And so, you know, I may come in and I think something's really challenging, daunting, and he just simplifies it for me. And it, his motto is do the doable. And it's never, you know, do the extraordinary, <laughs> you know, or, you know, these massive, it's just one step at a time. So everything is doable. And he's hard on me when he needs to be. There's only been maybe three or four times that I could ever remember. And he would tell you, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I remember how it felt. Yeah. And, but I needed it. I needed it to wake me up. And so that's something else that you want to look for is mm -hmm. someone who, who understands you and understands your temperament and, and they can be tough on you when you need it. And they can be gentle when you need it and compassionate and loving and kind. And that just someone that you feel like you're just in lock step with that person. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's amazing when you have a coach like that in, in your world. And, and I've had many other coaches in my world and that I've worked with, and each of them have brought me something very, very unique. My coach, Deb, that I worked with initially, uh, we worked on my intuition. She saw my gift of intuition, and she was just extraordinarily talented in that, uh, in that way. And and she really helped me have the courage and confidence to be able to tap in to my intuition. And so I worked with her for many years, about four or five years. And, um, and then I worked with Bill and Bill brought me something very different, which was around my masculine and feminine energy and really understanding the polarities of the masculine and the feminine. And he was brilliant in terms of how he, and patient in terms of how he really helped me see that I had come from this works place where I worked with a lot of men. I was in a software company for 10 years and it was mostly men on the executive team. And we all, you know, would cuss and swear and act like men <laughs> and, mm -hmm. And then, you know, you forget and when you walk out the door of the building that you end up bringing that home into your relationships mm -hmm. and that uh, incongruency in terms of polarity was not serving me. And so really opening up my, my feminine essence, my feminine energy and uh, Bill has since passed, but I'll be forever grateful to him for what he brought to me. And, and then I worked with Molly and I love, love Molly and Molly, uh, what she brought to me was the whole world of ontology and the metaphysical study of being. And that's what I trained in was ontological coaching. And, and Molly was just an absolute powerhouse. And she just told me straight, just how it was. And, and I think, you know, you learn so much from these different people and, and coaches. Um, and then my next coach was Rich Lidthen and Rich was amazing and is amazing. Still, he's an incredible, incredible coach. I feel so blessed, so honored to have worked with him and he taught me all about the prosperous coach methodology and which I have, have just absolutely loved the, this notion in terms of being service and giving potential clients an experience of what coaching is and letting them decide who the right coach is for them. And, and Rich really, there's so many nuances to the Prosperous Coach methodology and service. And he really was amazing in terms of 
being patient and really going through each of those various nuances with me. And I attended all of his intensives and um, I even went through his um, 4PC accelerator group. And it was, it, in addition to the one-on-one -on -one coaching, it, it was an amazing experience. And then I found Steve Chandler and I'd already shared about him and my experience. And then last year I had the privilege of working with Steve Hardison and, and Steve Hardison role models, role models, like no one I've ever experienced. He role models being in the world and, and just to be in his presence and it is it there's just there's no one else quite like him <laughs> he is truly uh just astounding and so for with steve i really learned that he's always in practice he is the an incredible learner like he just he doesn't just read a book he devours a book that he likes and when I say devours, it's like, it's highlighted. And then he writes, he writes on every part of it, that what, how it occurs for him. And I mean, I could go on and on about my experience with, with Steve Hardison and just incredible. Um, and then, um, and then I came back to work with Steve and I, I intend to work with Steve until Steve really does officially retire supposedly next year. And, and so, because I have such <laughs> a great working relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's like, I think it's, it's just so important to trust your intuition mm -hmm. on who you're working with and not allow it to get up too much in your head. Don't go out and interview a hundred coaches, you know, really select maybe your top three to five coaches and be sure that you have an experience or two with them so that you can feel like, what does it, what, what does that feel like for you? I just had a gentleman that I coached yesterday and he came back today. He said, and he wrote, Karen, that made a huge impact on me. I want you to know. And so he, here he'd had this experience and it shifted his world today. And he wrote to me, that's what we want is we want to be able to create an impact through that first experience. And that's as the coachee, that's what you want to look for. And so if it were me, I would never hire a coach without having an experience with that coach. And then I would check in, okay, what, what I brought into the coaching is, do I feel differently? Is there something, am I acting differently? Did they give me homework? What's happening between being coached yesterday and who I am today? So I think that's very important. Uh, and that if the coach isn't willing to give you an experience, you might want to pass that an interview is probably not enough because this is such an intimate experience and connection with another human being that I think it's, it's really important. The other thing that I would look for and I believe that I've created with every single one of those coaches, whether it's tangible or intangible is return on investment. And I go into my coaching and I very clearly set an intention as to what am I going to create as a return on investment? And as I say, it doesn't need to be tangible dollar amount. It could be, but it might be an intangible. Who am I being? How am I showing up? What, what's happening? Do I have a closer relationship with my spouse? Do I have a closer relationship with my children? What, what is that return on my investment mm -hmm. for the coaching? Um, uh, you know, deep, deep listening skills, I think are, that's another thing that's really important are the, during your session, is your coach talking a lot or are they listening? a lot. And 
how much are they listening versus Mm -hmm. talking? And when they are talking, is it a story? Are they creating impact through a story? Uh, Or are they advising? And so what is that? What, what's happening? Because in coaching, you want your coach to be evoking from you your own internal wisdom. Mm-hmm. And that's the distinction between coaching and consulting. Consulting is more advising. And so unless you're a coach and you're in an apprenticeship, then it should be more of the evoking. If you're in an apprenticeship, there's teaching there's some advising and coaching, there's a mix. So Mm -hmm. that's something that you'll want to pay attention to as, as well is, Mm -hmm. is your coach a deep listener? Do they hear everything that you're saying? Are they connected to you? Whether it's over zoom by phone or in person. And, and also that I think that's really important is to understand how you learn best And is it, there's some clients I coach by phone. I have for years and I still coach by phone and that's their preference. And so I'm listening for a yawn. I'm listening for a sigh. I'm listening for when they're processing. Right. And the same is true over zoom or in person. And can your coach provide that for you? So, um, are they open and vulnerable? Are they willing to share stories of their life? Because we're human beings at the end of the day, and we've all had experiences that we may not be proud of or that are deeply, deeply personal. And are they willing to go there and to share with you? And then I think one of the biggest things also, I don't want to forget to mention is integrity. Do they show up on time for sessions? Are they their word? Do they follow up when they say they're going to send materials? Mm -hmm. And and you really only get to find that out when you have that initial experience. I tell my clients that, my potential clients, sorry, this one yesterday, for example, Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so we're not going to talk again till October because he's on vacation and I'm on vacation. And I said, what I want you to do is I want you to treat me as if I were your coach and that you have that virtually unlimited access to me. And that if you feel stuck, I want you to email me, text me that you've emailed me. Or if you get really stuck and you want a spot coaching session for 10 minutes or less, reach out via text. And then, so I want them to be in the experience of what it would be like to work with me. And I think that's so important and that, you know, is your coach, this coach that you're in conversations with, are they willing to be patient, slow down, take their time, or are they in a rush to create you as a client? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's something else that I think you want to look for is, do you feel like you have the time to make the best decision for you? And the other thing is that if you feel like this coach isn't right for you, are they, and you tell them, look, I I don't think there's a fit or a connection here. Do they kind of stand back and are they defensive or do they say, Hey, no problem. Would you like some people, other people that I could refer you to? And, you know, are, are they leaning in to that or are they leaning back? What, which way are they going? And because they may not be right for you today, but they might be great for you in the future. And mm-hmm. if, especially if they're leaning in and trying to do, putting you first and trying to do the best for you. Mm-hmm. So Dorothy, I've, I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? Yes, I love it. I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> you know, and I love it, Karen, because it's a, it's a simple question. And that's why people ask this question. It is a very simple question. However, the answer to this question, it's not in a way, 
it's not that simple because everything. So thank you so much for sharing because there is so much to share about this. It yeah. sounds like, and it was the same for me, it is it is not so straightforward. There, there are no. things that we need to be aware. There are things that we need to be able to listen to for as clients as we yes. as we want to if we want to embark on this journey of coaching there yes. is actually so many things and you're touching on those things in a, such a beautiful way because there are so many things that we actually it is really good to consider to yes. be able to choose that person that can really help you and also what I wanted to say, Karen, I absolutely loved listening to your own coaching journey. And thank you so much for sharing it so generously and, and sharing the story of all the coaches that you've had. I really want to acknowledge you for amazing commitment to your own learning and to your own journey, to your own life people in your life your family and also your client because that really spoke volume for me and I have to share this as well you know I've met Karen we've met because I am at the um, coaching school that Ankush created and this is exactly Karen why I absolutely fell in love with you, oh, thank you. the commitment to learning and I've heard it in your interview. And for me, it was such a game changing. You know, I've learned so much about how to show up to get the most out of every conversation. And every conversation that we've had, it's been amazing for me and really impactful. And now as we are exploring it, everything that you're touching literally touches part of me already. And it's pure gold. I absolutely love it there is so much to consider so you know for the person who is just let's say they are hearing at work that maybe they friend has hired a coach and they just like oh, maybe this would be a really good idea for me but they not in this world what would you say is the first step? Where would you nudge them to look as the very first step? As a very first step in looking for a coach, mm -hmm. I, I would nudge them to talk to people who have worked with a coach and ask them about the experience. I think the best way to find a coach is through referral, through mm -hmm. a referral source. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the people who get referred to me, um, like this gentleman that I was in conversations with yesterday, it, it, it's the person's referring you to them because they know that you might be a good fit. Mm -hmm. And so I think the best number one way would be uh, a referral and talking with those people in your world. Um, I also had someone yesterday who reached out on LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. so she was doing her research and she went out to, I assume coaches in this area because she is local to this area. Mm -hmm. And then she reached out to me over, over LinkedIn. And so that's another way. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, friends and family and getting uh, a reference is probably the best way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what you are saying, uh, Karen, is literally ask people in your circle. Yes. If you know that someone is coaching, is having coaching, ask them. Literally, yes. ask them. Ask to be referred or to be introduced. This probably is the best way forward, isn't it? Because that referral, that that trust in some way that is already existing, that is a good starting point. And this is so important because 
sometimes when I speak to people, people say, I Google and I go, there are websites of coaches, but it's still difficult to know. Um, yeah. And there can be one person said, I'm literally going through website to website to website. Yeah. And I yeah. like some websites, some websites I'm not sure about, but I can spend hours looking through the websites I can spend even hours on the directories because there are some yeah. directories but again these are directories of names and yes. websites so yeah. what I'm hearing yes. is like ask what's happening with you know your friends with your family with your colleagues who is already experiencing coaching because that could be one good way forward to actually start um exploring it in a in a different way and and finding a first step towards finding your own coach that's right that's yeah. right I, I i truly believe that that that's a a great a great way you know with social media uh how it is today that's another way where you can really begin to see people and their personalities um coaches that are out on instagram uh facebook uh, LinkedIn. I don't spend a lot of time on social media. I get a lot of referrals. And so I don't end up having very much time to spend on social media, but I know there are some coaches out there where you can get kind of a feel for them. So I don't want to discount that either, but um, I would say, yeah, number one is a referral from someone that, that you trust that's in your world. And, and of course, um, I love that you're taking a stand for the client. And so I would say, read Dorothy's book when it comes out or watch this video or her video series. And, and then of course, get this book, how to get the most out of coaching as yes. well, because both these books, what they have in common is they take a stand for you, the coachee, for you, the client. Mm -hmm. And that's what, has been missing in this industry for so long is um, the books that really in the, the information out there that take a stand for the coachee and the client so that things are not misunderstood, that everything is clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Um, so no pressure, Dorothy, to write this book. Okay. <laughs> Write this book. I love that. You know, Karen, <laughs> I, before this interview, I actually had a chat with my uh, husband and I said to him, you know, I said, I, I really want to, this is a sequel. In my mind, this interview is, may lead to a book. And my husband is saying, but don't even say that because Karen may not like to for it to be a sequel or anything like this. And I'm saying, I'm it's a prequel. <laughs> you know, that's true. So, so it comes I before love... our book. <laughs> yeah, it's the before. But oh no, I am I am so supportive of this, <laughs> yeah. like 110% supportive. Because mm -hmm. anytime that we can help the coachee, the client to become more educated about what coaching is, mm -hmm. the better. The yeah. better. And yeah. so I see it as a companion. Please tell Paul it's a companion yes. <laughs> to our book. Yes. Yes. Uh, he he I've already shared with him um you know my experiences and he was like oh of, of course but I even so as I'm starting the interviews I don't even know where they're gonna go how they're gonna unfold and if there will be a book I'd love I'd love it because I I really feel in the same way it is it is important decision to be making to finding yes. a coach as you've shared, it is actually quite complex and it is an important decision to make. But I yes. really love what you are pointing to. So speaking to your, you know, the, the circle of your friends and family and colleagues, also looking at social media and seeing who really resonates because nowadays, you know, we have that opportunity to actually, you know, open the Facebook or LinkedIn and see who's, who's really resonating with you at the moment. Yeah. And what you've also mentioned is that your your intuition and, and looking for that chemistry. So as we take that first step, what do you think is then the next step in that journey? 
of finding so, a match. So the next step, do, do you mean like, what is the next step in terms of interviewing your, your potential coach? Yeah, yeah. So I think, as I had said earlier, it is um, talking with that coach. So having like an introductory, a short introductory conversation with a coach. Mm -hmm. And I always do that first uh, mm -hmm. before I invite them into an experience. Mm -hmm. And so checking in with that coach to see, hey, could I have an experience of what it would be like to work with you? Is mm -hmm. that possible? And then finding out, do you do that complimentary, which I do. And mm -hmm. the reason I do it as complimentary is because it's benefiting me as well as the client mm -hmm. that we're seeing whether or not we're a fit. Therefore, why would I charge for something where I'm benefiting as well mm -hmm. as they're benefiting and mm -hmm. that we want to see if we can create impact for them. Mm -hmm. Now, even mm -hmm. if the coach that you're in conversations with says, yes, I'd be willing to do that, but I charge. I think that's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. You'll get a lot because they are charging. You'll be committed to that mm -hmm. experience, probably even more committed. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's great too. Mm -hmm. And so that's a choice that you can make if you, if you feel really good about mm -hmm. this coach and you want to pay for that first experience and mm -hmm. see what it was like. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wouldn't recommend signing on for, you know, just based upon an interview with a coach. Mm -hmm. I, th there's mm -hmm. so much more to coaching. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I want to take a stand there and say, don't hire a coach just based upon like a 30 or 45 minute interview. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, you know, take your time, talk to a couple of coaches and, and make the best choice for you. And the other thing I want to say is mm -hmm. there are no wrong choices. You're going to learn from your coach as much as for what they do do as much as they don't do. And mm -hmm. so they're, they're, they're just, there's no wrong choices. Everything is an experience. And mm -hmm. so you'll be able to learn either way from the experience that you do have with your coach. I love that. So what you are saying, Karen, is that the next step really is to reach out and ask and really connect with the coaches who happen to be in your, you know, in your circle. So a person that yes. recommends or that coach because they've worked with them, maybe a friend, maybe a family member, maybe at work. Maybe there is a person on social media. So the next step, once you start to kind of connect in that way, is to really take a step forward and mm -hmm. reach out, drop them and drop an email to a coach and connect. So you can actually have a space with them face to face, you know, mm -hmm. see them, hear them. Um, and it's Karen, as you said, have that little conversation. So you, so Karen, I'm hearing you are doing just that kind of a connect conversation. And from mm -hmm. then, if, if the person wants to have an experience of coaching with, with you, then you invite them into a proper coaching conversation when they can get real experience of coaching to yes. really have a sense, isn't it? To really feel it on our skin. So Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. it's a matter of you don't need to go up in your head and ruminate and go back and forth. Trust your intuition and go forward. And uh, and you could always go into a smaller program to begin with and then move into a larger program. If that feels more comfortable, that's typically what I do is bring my clients into a small program that leads into a much bigger program. Uh, it gives them more of a, that kind of trial period and feeling of what it feels like um, mm -hmm. to work with me. And so, um, yeah, pull the trigger mm -hmm. and dive in. There's There are no wrong choices. Uh, you'll learn as much from working with a coach where you're, maybe you're butting heads as with a coach where you have great, great chemistry 
you're going to mm-hmm. learn in both of those situations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that as well because you know, Karen, when when you when you talk about it, it reminds me of this. Um, is it the saying or is is it some kind of quotation? Um, it says, "When the student is ready, the the teacher, teacher or the coach, you know, appears." And I love mm-hmm. what you are saying. This is like, don't overthink it. Just really go with it. Just really yeah. allow yourself to go with that intuition. So if yes. you have that good feeling and that yes just go for it just try it a short program just to give you a little longer experience of of um, that person and coaching with them yes yes yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. I have I love, for, yeah. for me I make my decisions like this these days and mm-hmm. and I plunk over a whole bunch of money <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. And, yeah and yeah yeah it yeah. doesn't it doesn't take me long at all yeah. these days. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And you know, I know that for some people it can take very long time because it is an investment. It is an investment mm-hmm. of money, it is an investment of time, it is an investment of effort and energy. So there can be this um I don't know, predisposition to overthink because we really want yes. to make it the right choice. And I love what you are pointing to because you are pointing to that, that there is actually no wrong choices. That's Just right. actually follow the breadcrumbs. That's uh, right. You know, say, say yes. If it feels good in your heart and if you're feeling that chemistry uh, is there and you are learning something and you are feeling that there is a shift, after you've had conversations with that particular coach, that is telling you something. That is telling yes. you, that is inviting you to go further. That's I right. I love that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Is there anything else, Karen, that you would like to share to, is there anything else that you would like to add? Any, you know, funny story maybe that comes to your mind or anything else that you'd like to add to this to really again just like um give people the last insight or last nudging uh, to to really go on this journey if this is what they want you know i i'm not thinking necessarily of any funny story <laughs> i know funny I, stories, no funny but, stories <laughs> anymore <laughs> I mean, I have many funny stories in working with my coaches, but one isn't necessarily coming to mind. Um, But it's, you know, I just have such respect for the profession and that because I, I know the impact that gets created in the work that I do and the work that I have done over all these years with my clients and that I think, you know, dive in, don't, don't ruminate too long, make sure you have an experience and, and give it your all, give it a hundred percent on your end of, as the client, and you will reap the rewards that are on the other side. So that's, that's what I'd like to say is this is such an honorable profession, a noble profession, and that I absolutely love what you're up to, Dorothy. And I see it as a companion to our book and, and you and me and Alex making the clients more powerful so that they can make the right choices when they come into coaching. And so that's that's what I believe. I'm extremely passionate. This is this is what I'll be doing the rest of my life. And um, so thank you. It's been such an honor to be with you. I'm so happy that we met and just this lovely connection that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Same here, Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's it's really true honor for me to be in this space with you. I respect you so much. And again, everything that I've learned from you so far, and I know there will be more. Uh, This interview has been amazing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We'll see what grows out of this. If 
more interviews definitely a book could be uh, so yeah I'm really really excited I'm really excited about giving people as you said um, information so they can be powerful in the way that they choose their coaching and they can engage in that process powerfully so they can create the lives that they really want to lead because it is possible yes. so thank you so much thank you thank you today. thank you Dorothy Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>